Now when it comes to creating your battles within your RPG Maker MB game, there's one final thing you need to keep in mind, which is the states. Uh, no, not those states. I'm referring to the states which are THE states. The passive effects, the sa the uh, basic abilities, the status effects, uh, it's hard to explain, but you get the idea. Nearly every RPG has some form of states. For example, we have the knockout, which is what the actors are going to be afflicted with when they're knocked out. <laughs> There's blind, which causes blindness and causes the hit rate to be lowered. There's confusion, rage, uh, silence, oh yeah, all this crazy. You get the idea just by looking at these states, what they do, and what they're meant to be. And in today's tutorial, we're going to look at how we can create our own state and what all these crazy little functions mean and do. So let's go to change maximum, let's create another one. And let's get straight into it. We'll call this one my, oh, whoa, my state. There we go. We'll choose an icon to be shown on the player when the state is afflicted on them. And we'll make it this uh, flask right here, I guess. There we go. Now, part one, the most important part of a state is its restriction. Now, restriction forces a player to perform a certain action or no actions at all, depending on what the restriction is. So, for example, if it's set to none, this player can select their moves and there won't be a problem. But if it's set to attack an enemy, as you see right here, then the player is not going to be able to choose any move. Instead, they're going to be forced to attack an enemy every turn when they have this state afflicted on them. Same applies to attack anyone, attack an ally, so if you want to create some sort of confusion or mind manipulation state, you'd use these restrictions. And finally, it also cannot move, which just means this player's turn is going to be completely skipped when they have this state afflicted. Now, the way restrictions work is that if you have multiple states afflicted on a single actor, the one that's the lowest on the list takes priority. So for example, if you have a one that says attack an enemy and another one that says attack an ally, the player is going to be forced to attack an ally since that one takes priority. Now don't get that confused with the actual priority right, priority right here, which actually just refers to what's displayed. So what I mean by that is that this can be a number between 0 and 100 as you see right here, and depending on what has the highest priority, that's what's going to be shown on the actor. It doesn't necessarily mean that that actor doesn't have the states, it's just that there's a limited amount of spaces that the icons for the states can be shown, and so if you want a very important state to be shown on the actor, you'd give it a higher priority. But if you have something less important, say blindness, I mean it is important, but it's if you have multiple, multiple, multiple different states, it would not be that high as compared to something like Rage, which has 70, Confusion, which has 75, Sleep, which has a, a whoa, it should be 90, I switched it for some reason, but yeah, Sleep that has a 90 priority. And so for our state, we'll set it to something like 20, which means if we have only this state, we'll see that we have it through this icon, but if we have like 5 or 6 states, we're probably not going to have any indication that this state has this state because the icon is not shown because our priority is that low. Did that make sense? Hopefully it did. Anyway, next comes the SV or side view battler things. What I mean by this is that the side view battlers can have special animations for if your player has this state afflicted on them. So for example, we have four motions. Normal, which is the default motion the player is going to be moving in. Abnormal, which means the player is going to have a like, different stance and movement while they're standing in a side view battler. We'll get into that later, you can see these just by testing them out. We have sleep, which means the player will be lying on the ground at sleeping when this is occurring. And dead, which means the player will just be lying there dead when this state is afflicted. Yep. And we also have the SV overlay, which is going to be a small animation that plays over top the side view battler when it's going. So we can just, you can see all the lists, you can just choose ones like silence, go into a battle, check out how it looks, we'll get into that later. But for now let's continue. With, now we have the removal conditions. Now this is going to be the conditions in which, if the condition is true, the state gets removed. So a basic one you probably want to have for most of your states is, remove at battle end, which means the state's going to be removed when the battle ends. Another one you have is removed by restriction, which means that if this state gets overridden, like it's restriction, if it gets another state that has a higher restriction than this one, then this state, the lower state, is going to be removed completely if this is checked. If this is unchecked, it'll still keep the state on the actor even if the restriction is higher, and the other effects will still take into account, such as the traits and all the stuff here. Furthermore, we also have a, just a timer for how long it'll take till the state is removed. We can have action end, and this will be a certain amount of turns until it ends, or we can have turn end, and it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be identical, pretty much. Except, action end means it'll be removed after the player acts in the turn, but turn end means it'll only be removed at the very end of the turn. And this is really just going to be based off of your mechanics in the game. Do you want all your states and everything to be prioritized based on each turn, or do you want everything to happen in the moment when it's happening? But anyway, like I said, if we set something like action end, and we set this to like 3, and whoa, whoa. 
three and seven. This will mean that this state will be at least on the player for three turns, and it can have a maximum of seven turns, and it could be anything in between. If we set something like 3-3, three, three, that means this state will be guaranteed to have three turns and only three turns when the player is afflicted with it. Now, down here we have the remove by damage. This will mean that there's a certain amount of chance every time the player is damaged for the state to be removed. Right now, this will make it so there's a 100% chance that this state will be removed when the player is damaged by it. So if we set it something like 20, there would be a 20% chance that this state will be removed when the actor is hit with a skill or item or damage anyway from the enemies. Oh, okay, next comes walking. Now this will occur to states that you can have outside of battles, and this just simply means this is how many steps it'll take for this state to be removed from the actor. So if we set it to like 20 steps, that means this state will be removed from an actor after walking on the world map for 20 steps. Next comes the messages. These will just be a simple battle log messages that appear on the very top when the player is afflicted with the state, inflicted with the state, the state persists, and it's removed. So pretty much what you do is just say, if the actor's name goes here, it'd be like, actor has obtained the my state state. Yeah. And if the enemy is afflicted with, they could do something else. So we'd say like, has afflicted the state state. Oh, we could put like, got the, uh oh. Well, I'm just gonna leave it. Got the my, the, the. Uh, this is a mess. But anyway, if the state persists, this is what appears if the state continues on each and every turn. So if it has, if it's still on, on a certain turn, this state, this message will appear. So we'll say, if the state persists, still has my state. And when the state is removed, this message will play. So it could say, the uh, target names, we can do apostrophe yes, my state was removed. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, it's not really that complex. But it does take a lot of explanation to explain how this affects the battle mechanics of the game. Now, we did all this, but we actually haven't done the most important part, which is the actual effects that the state afflicts onto the actor, which is going to be used through this traits part right here. Now, if you may have noticed, this traits section has been reoccurring a lot in all of our little tutorials. For example, in the actors, we have a traits bar right here. Same thing occurs in the classes, as you see right here, the weapons, as you see right here, the armors right here, and uh, finally the states which we're working on right now. Now, as you can probably guess, all these traits all affect the actor depending on whether the actor has this item, weapon, armor, class, etc. And for the most part, if you go in here, you'll find that, oh my gosh, there's so many different traits to choose from. And we'll actually go into this into the next video where we actually go review each and every trait and its effect. But for the time being, we're just gonna take something very simple like go in here, go to param, parameter, Attack is times 50%, which means when this player is affected by this state, its attack is going to be reduced by 50%, meaning it has only half the attack now. Yeah, so let's once again review exactly what the state is. It's called My State. It has this icon. If the player has a state, he cannot move at all, which means all of his turns are skipped. In terms of being shown on the player's actual screen, it has a priority of 20, which means it's pretty low and probably other icons will override it. Its motion will be dead, which means the player will be lying there dead. It will have a silence overlay, which means it will have the silence icon flying above its head. We have a condition that removes up the battle end, which means at the end of the battle, this can, all these states, for all, ugh, all the people that have this state will have it removed. We have removed by restriction, tracked off, which means it can't be removed by any other states. Another way it can be removed is that if the player has it for three turns in a battle, then it will be removed. It can also be removed by having the player be hit, and there's a 20% chance it will be removed. Finally, if you somehow get this state outside of battle, you can remove by walking 20 steps. It has all these messages that can be played, and the effects it does have on the player is that it removes 50% of the player's attack. Oh, okay. So, the real question is now, how do you actually get one of these states onto an actor or enemy? And the answer is, you have multiple choices, but one good way to do it, just go to a skills, go to the effects, so we'll go to like, skill 11, Give it an effect that it does state, add state, and just add the state you wish to use. 100% chance, or you can make it like 50% chance. And this makes it so that when this skill is used on an enemy or actor, it's going to add the state, my state, or at least it's going to have a 50% chance to do so when this attack hits. Another way to change a state is go to the change state right here for an event. Set a certain actor or the entire party to gain a certain state, add or remove the state, and then select the state you wish to use. 
So for this example, it was set this to, to blah, 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 blah. this event right here will make it so this actor will add my state to that person. So this will happen when that this event is run. And so that's pretty much all for this video. It's very confusing, but I would highly recommend just going through and testing out each and every state and seeing how they work in your game. Next that video, we'll be going over the final part of the battle mechanics, which will be the traits of your armors, weapons, your states, your classes, and your actors, and how they all interact with each other, and what each and all those stats and weird things do. But that's all for this tutorial. Until next time, RPG Maker Tutorial. End. Oh, oh, oh.